James Phelan back to the scene of the crime last night. You must be delighted to get that win over local rivals. Always nice to get one up on that Glencar Manor. Absolutely. Delighted on, on several different levels. Uh, we got a performance. We, we uh, put ourselves in contention to be you know fairly high up in that group. Um, and I'd say we, we, we beat our, our local neighbours and rivals manner and you know the fact that they were the county they are the present county champions, you know, it was it's uh, they were the marker, you know, that we wanted to 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 set ourselves against, you know, and so once you, you want to pitch yourself against the best. So we came across that now. That doesn't mean anything going going forward, but at least you know, we are at the races, you know. In terms of the game yesterday, a bright start from yourselves? We got a great start. We got the dream start. I think we hit two two in about five minutes, um, and and that really set us up for the performance ahead. You know, it put that daylight between us that it was just always going to be difficult. You know, given the type of games we have with Glen Manor, they were going to find it hard to, to to bridge an eight point lead. In terms of the structure of the championship this year, it must be nice to have had games where you haven't had to travel too far for games, uh, rather than the usual trek to maybe Drumshambo, Carrick, or Balnamore. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we were in Leitrim Village and we were in Drum Riley, but while I think it's a huge distance to come from Drum Riley down here, we're used to these journeys uh, to, to the south of the county all the time. Um, but no, it, it has actually worked out well. It's been great to host championship games at home. It brings a different uh, atmosphere to the whole thing. And you know, like last night, it was a special occasion here with having our new pitch and having as our, our neighbours here. You know, there was a good crowd and there was a good atmosphere, and it was a lovely evening as well. What did the streaming element bring to it, or are you even aware of that once you're kind of watching the game develop in front of you? No, generally not not aware of it as it's going on, but um, it does create a buzz, uh, all right. You know, I suppose going out beforehand, lads would have known that you know this was being shown around, and you know there would have been family members and and so and so on watching this in different parts of the world. You know, and we were getting messages afterwards from from different parts of the world saying well done and all the rest. So I suppose from that point of view, it does bring a different uh, type of an element to it. In terms of the overall championship again, based on the first maybe round or two of games. There were certain trends that have pretty much been knocked on their head over the last two weeks. Yourselves had a rough opening day, maybe defeat to Leitrim Gales. Uh, you've turned that around completely. You sit on top of the table, albeit with one game left to go in the in the group. How have you seen the kind of the development of your squad over the last four weeks? Yeah, well, with the year that was in it, uh, it, it was always liable that something like that would happen. That you go in cold to the first game. Um, you know, with the with the whole COVID nineteen and the lockdown, it didn't give you a chance to prepare that well. Insofar you couldn't get uh, challenge matches and so on. So, you know, like everybody else, we went in with what we thought was our best fifteen starting. It didn't work out for us on that day, and you know we had to evolve and change fairly quickly. But luckily, you know, the, the changes we made ha have worked for us, and the team have settled back in again, and and we got the last three results on the bounce. So it's been fairly positive. The same is probably true in the other half of the championship in the other group and it really is almost a lottery now as to who's going to finish top of a group and who's going to finish third or fourth in a group so it's very hard to predict who you're going to have in the quarterfinals. Has any of that come into your consideration at all as you're looking at the final permutations in the, the fifth round of games? Up until now I hadn't looked at it. Uh, we were just you know, really interested I suppose in what we were doing on this side of the group ourselves. As it is, I think there's, you know, all the teams are in four points on the other side. So it's down to next weekend, anything can happen. And being quite honest, it, not really, it, you know, there's not a kick in the ball of a ball between any of those teams over there. Carrick, uh, you know, had a, a serious setback early on and, you know, have come through in flying colours now. So it really doesn't matter who you meet on that other, the other side of that group now. Manor Hamilton play Leitrim Gales next week, probably the only fixture that affects you in a material mm -hmm. way. If Manor win it, you finish top on the head-to-head -head results. Right. If Leitrim Gales draw or win, they'll be top of the group. Mm -hmm. In terms of, that, if you finish top of that group, it is Carrick you'll play in that quarter-final because mm -hmm. they're almost guaranteed to be fourth based on the score difference. It would take a kind of a, a, a fair, an interesting combination of results on the last day for them to finish anywhere but fourth mm -hmm. in that group. Have you had a chance to look at them? Will you go look at them next week? I know you're idle. <laughs> yeah. I... Oh, they're, actually, they're idle too. They're, they are, they're finished yeah. their campaign too. So you kind of don't really get that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, well, look, uh, some of those games are, are online. So we could go and look at them if you're really interested. But no, I'm just interested in what we're doing ourselves. Talk to us about the actual team this year and some of the changes you have made since that opening day. Like, who has come into the team that maybe has impressed you that you weren't maybe necessarily expecting massive things from this year? 
Yeah, well, Donald Clancy came in last night. Uh, that was his first start this year, and he, he scored one two. Uh, so that was you know that was a huge bonus for him. Um, well, the team hasn't changed that much. Maybe a few positional switches. Reese Brennan finds himself back along the half back line now, and he's in, he's enjoying life there. Um, Killian McGlone is playing a wee bit closer to goal. He scored two goals last night. So a few of those positions, positional changes are, have have worked for us, and you know the fellas are seeming to enjoy where they are at the minute. You know, there's a few teams still lurking there in the the middle of those two groups, and. It's probably been spread now from maybe three or four teams that people were talking about at the start of the championship to probably six or seven mm -hmm. who could potentially, yourselves included, who could mount, mount a serious title challenge. Where do you see this ending up? Where do you see, I know I'm going to put you on the spot, but where do you see this finishing up uh, over the next couple of weeks? Who do you think is going to be there at our Maybe the best way to phrase it is, who do you see as the biggest obstacle to uh, a county championship run? <laughs> we're the biggest obstacle to ourselves, <laughs> to be quite honest. It's, it, that's, you know, that's just so difficult to answer. Um, obviously, you know, well, you know, Manor are still going to be there. They're the present county champions. There'll be a kick in Manor. Um, Ballamore are going to be looking to, to, to go one step further than last year. Mohill are always there, thereabouts. Carrick have suddenly put their hands up. Fina are going to be there. It's, it's impossible to say at this stage. You know, there are a lot of quality teams coming through. And you know what? It's great for Leitrim football to see this. Where, as previously, you'd have been fit to point out, okay, there's two teams, possibly you will see maybe three that are going to, you know, uh, fight for this championship. There's a good six teams at the minute that, that we could take points or take a, a game of each other at this stage. What's next for you? An idle week this week, then I think it's a week off before the quarterfinals kick in. So you've got a nice little break ahead of that. Yeah. What will you do with the team over the next uh, two or three weeks? Yeah, look, we'll we'll get back to the drawing board, take a look at ourselves. You know, as you say, possibly take a look at pot potential opposition, and just you know, we're hoping to kind of follow the the, the upward, you know, trend that we're on at the minute. Maybe work on our fitness a wee bit, work on our game. There's something things we can work on, you know. You're not going to tell us today. <laughs> I don't know myself at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, congratulations on... It's always nice to win a local derby. There's been plenty of them this year in the Championship, but this one always has a bit of bite to it between Melvin Gales and, and Manor, and I know you'll take a bit of delight in this. I'm sure they won't take it lying down, and they'll, they may cross swords with them again later in the year. Look, you know, there's always that possibility, and uh, listen, we'd love to see Manor and back in the county final again with us. So, yeah, it might happen. <laughs>